uh, dot, dot com. Thank you, Mr. Lawton. We appreciate yeah. your testimony this morning. Uh, our last speaker, and if anybody else wants to make any public comments, please file a form with the county clerk, Lyra Bishop. You think it's really unfair that uh, your sister was targeted probably unfairly. My name's Lyra Bishop. I always forget to say that from Paris. Um, I don't think it's unfair to be asking tough questions, whether it's a paid volunteer of your staff or of Mormon bishops that are mythical or anonymous pamphlets that we don't know the origin of. I did call your office yesterday. Rose answered the phone at 12.11 p.m. She transferred me to Vern, your chief of staff. And we talked before he hung up on me. And he, he actually admitted that there was no specific Mormon bishop. Um, he said that somebody brought it to your attention, but that it was on a news station from LA, um, but he didn't know which station. And then when I said, who brought it to your attention? He changed his story and said, well, you know, maybe the supervisor saw it on the TV himself. So there's another changing story. Then I said, you know, it really concerns me because the anonymous pamphlet, nobody knows where that came from either, but Ordinance 884 is now law in Riverside County, unincorporated. Did you know where the pamphlet came from, Ms. Walls? No? Your time to comment. Yeah, every time a question is asked, you know, yeah. you interrupt. Your time to comment, and if we choose to respond, we will miss. Right, so yeah. Um, right let's see. I asked them specifically, I asked Vern specifically, was the pamphlet mailed? He said, no, it was not mailed. I asked them, was it handed to him? He said, no, it was not handed to me. And then he said, the supervisor just showed up with it. So the question is, who gave it to you, Mr. Stone? There's no mythical Mormon, well, actually, there is a mythical Mormon bishop. There's no specific Mormon bishop that this ordinance uh, would help. There's no origin or validity to the anonymous pamphlet that you on December the 9th said that this is the reason why this ordinance was brought. Why will you not answer the question as to who gave you the pamphlet on Anonymous when Tommy Davis, the spokesman for the Church of Scientology, admitted that absolutely the Church of Scientology was involved in compiling that pamphlet? Silence is deafening. Yes, Did you guys yes, know? Let me respond. Please. Uh, that pamphlet did not influence my vote, nor did the Scientology testimony for or against by Anonymous. I think 30 feet from a residence is reasonable protection for everyone in this county. Cities have that ordinance. We adopted it. And uh, I don't know why you keep trying to make a, a straw man, a boogeyman, out of uh, uh, the Anonymous group or the Scientology is this going group. To my time? I'm just responding. You, you asked a question, and uh, I'm answering. The materials that you're talking about have no relationship to the ordinance we passed. Well, then why did Mr. Stone, why did you say that that pamphlet was the reason for bringing the ordinance? You said it on December the 9th. Your time is up. Thank you. If anybody in the public, Mr. Would, Chair, just, yeah, just one, a one sec, Mr. Buster. Uh, if anybody wants to know the origin of the public websites that compiled that brochure package that I distributed and was commenting about in the meeting, you're welcome to call my chief of staff, Vern Lawrence, and he will give you the address of every page that was in that pamphlet that is public information, hateful information by a group called. Anonymous. Supervisor Buster? No, uh, it's, it's interesting that the um, coincidence of the implementation or the effective date of our ordinance coincided 
with uh, busloads of uh, protesters uh, going to the homes of AIG um, executives. Okay, so it's, it's and I thought, I wonder if we have an AIG executive uh, that, that uh, lives or vacations in our county. Um, uh, because if, if we did, and we may, and as I pointed out several meetings ago, we may have some other financial scammers um, in the in the near near future or in the distant future, that people are concerned about and want to go out to their homes. Maybe uh, uh, investors that lost all their money want to protest. Uh, but if we did have some AIG people living here, um, and those protesters came out, they would probably be uh, limited from leaving, uh, as as I saw in the news articles. Uh, n notices in and around mailboxes, uh, and they would have to be very careful about measuring the distance that they um, um, that they got from the wherever the property line happened to be. It looked to me, though, that most of the AIG investors' homes that I saw in the news were well uh, three more than 300 feet uh, back of their own property lines. So um, uh, 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 this is a this is a live issue, and it may still touch Riverside County. Thank you, Supervisor. Our last uh, speaker, unless anybody else wishes to address the board, is Julie Waltz. You have three minutes. Good morning. Good morning. By successfully ramrodding Ordinance 884 through for one special interest group, you have closed the door to residential targeted picketing. However, residential targeted picketing after eight and a half months of targeting the residence of twice convicted sex offender David Allen Dokich, three new state laws that provided greater, greater oversight of sex offenders were enacted. Jessica's law was enacted. The voice of the people were heard. Together, we the people made a difference. Supervisor Stone, you proudly joined in the targeting the residents of Dokage, or were you there to be seen by the media and add padding to your political career? Residential targeted picketing was acceptable in 2005. Today, 2009, it's the success of ramrodding Ordinance 884 for no legitimate reason, just for one special interest group. December 9, 2009, Supervisor Stone publicly stated the 50-page anonymous pamphlet was the reason for introducing the ordinance, 884. Anybody who wanted to view the pamphlet was welcome. I decided to take you up on that offer March 20, 2009. I went to the clerk of the board to view the pamphlet. The clerk of the board stated there were no copies available for public viewing. Supervisor Stone, you failed to introduce this into public records. As per your chief of staff, Vern Larson, the only copy that was available was given to the media outlet. He didn't know which one, but thought it was KESQ Channel 3 Palm Springs. Perhaps it was investigative reporter Mr. Nathan Baca, a politician who used a 50-page document to successfully ramrod Ordinance 884 through the original and only copy, would, why didn't he keep it? Did December 9th, Supervisor Ashley said, I wouldn't want people in front, in front of my house waving. The protest in front of Supervisor Tavoloni's March 16th, 2008, in the press enterprise, you stated it wouldn't do anything good. One thing I don't do is back down to intimidation. It cl closes my mind to their issues. As members of the voting public, I would like to believe that your vote to ramrod ordinance through was not influenced by personal experience or ta of targeted picketing. What if we the, oh, I'm going to skip that. I demand once more that the repelling, repealing of Ordinance 884. And yes, Mr. Stone, congratulations for your campaign for state senate. If you elect, if you're elected, have you thought about how you will answer questions to your constituents at the state level? Because you can't answer them at the county level. Please don't discard the California Constitution like you have the United States of America Constitution. Thank you, Ms. Bishop. We're going to do a closed session now. Have a nice afternoon. There is. Oh. Thank you.